Good afternoon, and I'm delighted to be here with Herb Lai from the IFC. Um, welcome, Herb. Uh, you're a relative newcomer to GAD. I am. Um, uh, the history and roots of GAD are very much actually in the privatisation processes that started in Western Europe in right. the sort of 1990s and 2000s. You'll tell us about the IFC strategy because actually you're looking at a, a different type of market. Uh, we focus on emerging markets, mm. so we actually cannot work in Euro Western Europe, uh, any of the developed countries. Mm. Uh, historically, we worked a lot in Latin America. Mm. That's where the privatization programs have been a little bit more uh, advanced, mm. if you will. Uh, but of course, we're seeing a lot more activity in, in India, in Indonesia, and elsewhere now. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and do you, are you, how, how, uh, how do you think the, the question about the overall prospects for the airport community in emerging markets. Um, you see it as, I mean, we've seen some very interesting macro presentations mm -hmm. uh, about the relative growth between Western Europe and the developed, econ the developed economies, I'm not sure what the right terminology is these days, um, um, and really the growth in aviation is very much coming from, sourced from emerging markets. Um, how confident, you, as, a, as, a, as an investment officer mm -hmm. uh, looking at this space, how confident are you about that future growth? I think we're quite confident. I think we have to be confident because mm. we work there. Mm. Uh, we don't have a choice. Uh, but I think historically the data has proven us to be right. I, I think the most dramatic um, aviation growth has been in countries like uh, in China mm. and, and India. Mm. Mm. Uh, one country that we're very familiar with is Peru, yeah. where we have a you know very nice investment with uh, Fraport and Lima Airport Lima, Partners. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when we first invested there, we had a four million passenger airport and now it's 15 million right, and right. I think that's a very good example of how one country as it um, prosperity hits the yeah. country uh, the country the the local population travel that would mm. be such a big boost mm. to to the to their to the country and also to the airport itself when mm. um, now the domestic passengers is actually at a, at a par with the international traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, do, I mean, uh, as a as a provider of mm. generally debt debt based products, Mostly. I guess. Yeah. Um, um, what about the risks that you're you're factoring in? What are the sort of the the longer term risks or the shorter term risks that you have to think about? The shorter term risk, I think, is not that different from anyone else. Mm. Uh, especially, we work mostly in in privatizations and concessions. Right. So most of it is uh, ramp up risk, right. uh, construction risk, execution risk for the concession itself. Yeah. Um, so probably first three to five years yeah. before the construction is done, and we, when you put the airport on a on a separate higher track, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um, longer term, you you're probably talking about mostly macroeconomic risk. And also mostly about regulatory and, and political risk, right? Right. Because uh, to the extent that you're involved in a in an airport for 20, 30 years, you're yeah. going to go through a handful of regime changes. Chances yeah. are, uh, and that each of that brings potentially different objectives for the country, different um, ways they treat uh, investors, and so on and so forth. So that's something that we will look at a little bit more uh, on a longer term basis. That's yeah. very mm -hmm. interesting, of course, very important actually, and mm -hmm. very difficult to predict. You can't predict. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the pipeline. Yes. Uh, the GAD is always there's mm. always questions about mm. the pipeline because it's a, 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 a sort of somewhat of a friend, feeding frenzy for investors. Mm -hmm. And uh, how how do you feel about the pipeline that you're looking at at the moment? And I'm very interested in you know let's let's try and also subdivide the emerging markets because it's a that's a that's a big big area. We we feel good about it. Mm. Uh, I think. Um, you know, the, the, the saying we have uh, in time is that the, the emerging markets always has a pipeline, and the pipeline is always emerging at the same time. So <laughs> it's, um, unfortunately, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we see enough uh, countries embracing privatization, uh, embracing concessions and PPPs as mm. a means of improving services, and as well as to supplement the budgets that we think um, in the near future, in the next three to five years, you actually will see quite a bit of activity. Yeah. I think you have the Brazilian airports coming up, which you know has already gone through a certain cycle. Uh, of course, you have Santiago in Chile, you have you know a couple other processes that are already announced. You yeah. have um, a lot of activity in India, uh, yeah. in Indonesia. So we think the pipeline will be quite active in the next three to five years. Yeah. And then yeah. you have a you have another wave in uh, Africa coming up over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And do you think there's, um, 
Do you think there's a role for, in the airport market from an investor's perspective, and particularly from a sponsor's perspective, is perhaps somewhat divided between investors who focus on OECD and the more, the more sort of brownfield type projects or, or, or investments, and contra- perhaps contractors or sponsors who will come into the, the, the concessions, particularly where there's developed an angle. Now, I don't know, perhaps this is an unfair question, but perhaps you don't look too much across each spectrum. Do, do you think there's, there should be a role for those who are really invested in Europe and you know, to, to come and join in the sort of growth that's in the emerging markets? I think the hope is that there will be, mm. uh, but I think a lot of it depends on uh, their risk appetites. Yeah. I think a lot of the um, investment funds in particular are not set up to go to mm. emerging markets. Mm. Uh, it's, an, it, it's a market that they don't know what to, uh, they, they're not sure how to conceive the emerging market risk and how they yeah. assess it, yeah. uh, as well as the regulatory and political and so on mm. and so forth. So, you know, I think there's a distinction, but as you know, the the developed countries, there's probably four projects or a good year will be 13, I think, yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, But that's, that's uh, I think that's clearly a spike, yeah. right? And you have yeah. so much money chasing so few yeah. deals that the valuations Absolutely. are astronomical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think, from our perspective, if you're willing to take a little bit more emerging market risk, yeah. you can actually go to some of these countries, um, hopefully own a very good asset, mm-hmm. and, and and earn a very good return, mm. and that's clearly what uh, us as IFC want to do to bring, uh, you know, money from the developing nations to, yeah. to to uh, emerging markets. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hope. No, that was very thank you for your time. Great yeah. to see. You.